Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Are you ready? Everybody, it's Jeff. Uh, nice day here in Maine. Very sunny outside today, and uh, uh, hopefully the weather holds up for the rest of the week. And uh, people are out enjoying the weather here. And uh, you know, <clears throat> I could be out there, I guess, instead of sitting in here doing this. <laughs> but you know, you know how some some people, you know, when they they have some the things that they like to do and they just you know at various times people do them well one of the things i like to do is to make things out of clay so i i made this uh this battlestar galactica here out of clay <laughs> uh, well here's my hand and this is how big it is compared to it okay um yeah, I mean, yeah, it ain't perfect. I mean, it looks kind of lumpy in a little bit, but uh, I don't know. It was something I like to do, you know, and it's a, it's a hobby. And uh, so, yeah, I like doing stuff like that, making, uh, making things spaceships. I got a whole bunch of other clay spaceships and stuff that I've made. That's just the most recent one that I've done. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I got hobbies, I got, you know, things I like to do, and this is one of my hobbies, and I don't do it for money, I don't do it for, uh, I don't even think I do it really for, for attention or views for that matter, I mean, I do it because I, that's what I want to do, and, uh, uh, <laughs> uh it just, uh, people do things, I guess, just to get some personal pleasure out of it so you know like people like this lady across the road over there is making a huge flower bed um they must have brought enough earth over there to uh tilt the the planet off its axis <laughs> but they got a big project going on in their front yard so they're going to be busy all summer with that i think uh and uh they got a green thumb over there and it looks like it's it'll be fun my, my i used to help my mother do big projects like that in her yard um and when she passed away, unfortunately, uh, you know, my father had, did not take care of it. And, you know, it just got ruined. And when he sold the house, the people that bought it just tore it all apart. And it's sad because it had a big fountain in there. And it was uh, uh, beautiful pl uh, flowers that, you know, she would put in there. Uh, and uh, I, I say that, you know, if, if that stuff had been immaculate at the time my father was selling the house, he could have got more money for it. Uh, but, uh, you know, such as it is, but, you know, uh, with, uh, with spring and all that, now is the time to start doing all this, uh, all this, I think, and, uh, to get those plants in the ground so they'll start growing. Another thing that a lot of people are doing right now is clearing out trees, the trees that fell during the windstorms we had this winter. <laughs> and there's still that big one up on uh, main street there, uh, in Vizi here that they've only chopped an end off to keep it from hanging in the street, but the rest of it's still there and they haven't done anything with it. It really looks like an eyesore. I mean, I mean, it's just, you know, what, how, why can't they just go out there with a chainsaw, chop it up into small pieces, you know, and do something with it? Instead, they just, they left the tree fallen in the ground and it looks hideous. So I don't know who owns the tree or what property that's on, but... 
you know, it would be nice if they went out there and they tried to, you know, get, you know, take it, clear it out, you know, because uh, it just, it looks bad, especially when you're on that street. I mean, I mean, Stillwater, some of you, you know, Stillwater Avenue, I mean, that's a busy road. I mean, if something like that was just sitting near somebody's front yard, I'm sure somebody would say something about that, but uh, Main Street's no different. I mean, you know, you, you have to go through there to get into Bra Bangor, but <clears throat> it's just, uh, you know, <laughs> A lot of repairs, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I look, when I drive around, I see a lot of damaged trees everywhere and, and, and the cities are taking care of what's theirs, you know, they clearing out the areas. So, uh, the protests, the media likes to say this is happening all over the country. Uh, but the only two places they're focusing on is New York and California. So where's all over the country? I mean, <laughs> we're talking about two states here all the time, and it's it's always those two states, you know. Um, and I don't see much about any other states. I mean, there certainly hasn't been any of that going on here in this state uh, that I know of, and I've been watching the local news. So uh, I think that because this is happening so much in those two states, there must be a purpose behind it. And... You know, I was thinking that, uh, you know, a little while back, but I didn't, there's really no no kind of backing to, to support it, you know. Um, however, uh, so, uh, who was it? Somebody is already, uh, already making that point for me. Uh, and there's a post here. Let me see if I can, let's see. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, this is from the New York Post, uh, written by Catherine Don Levy and Amanda Woods, and it's entitled "Professional Outside Agitators Are Behind Illegal Takeover of Columbia University Academic Building." Uh, it says NYPD brass and mayor Eric Adams on Tuesday blamed outside agitators for the illegal takeover of an academic building at Columbia University as officials urged the Ivy League student protesters to call it quits. Quote, this is to serve their own agenda, unquote, Adams said uh, of the outside group at a Tuesday press conference. Quote, they're not here to promote peace, unity, or allow a peaceful display in one voice, but they are here to create discord and divisiveness, unquote. Quote, we cannot and will not allow what should be a peaceful gathering to turn into a violent spectacle that serves no purpose. We cannot wait until this situation becomes even more serious. Unquote, the mayor said. Uh, the NYPD's intelligence and counterterrorism unit first realized they were dealing with the antagonistic mob when dozens of agitators stormed into Hamilton Hall in the middle of the night on Tuesday, a significant escalation of the anti-Israel student encampment protests. Okay, so he's saying this. So if he's saying that there's probably there's some evidence here, right? There's got to be, he's not naming names or groups, but he is saying that there are people behind this that are deliberately going into these protests and stirring the shit, making it worse, uh, just to make this 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 whole thing more divisive in, a, in our country. And so then I think, well, this is the press, California, the press in New York, two states that are like Democrat strongholds, I think, in, in a lot of ways. And so that right there would be another little piece of, of the puzzle saying that perhaps there is something going on, uh, that, they, that this is happening in those important states because of the electoral votes, right? And if they can, if they can split New York and they can split California, that would give Republicans a better chance, right? To vote whoever they want. And so I'm thinking, well, like I said, at the start of the year, by the time, but when we get closer to November, the shit storm is going to escalate, okay? Because we know how the, the maggots are now. We saw what they're like on January the 6th, so we know there's no line they won't cross, okay? They're, they all want to martyr themselves for the orange idiot, okay? So, that being said, these same groups out there, since the Oklahoma City bombing, who have been trying to destroy this country from way back then, are still in the game. 
okay? And they're, they're infiltrating de- these protests because they're Democrat protests. I, I would think by and large they are. That It's mostly liberals that are protesting. They're infiltrating these groups and making them turn on each other, okay? Uh, that would be like a replay of, you know, what happened in the 60s, right? Uh because that's how the Democrats lost the presidential election, was because of the protests and how they were protesting them, their own party. The Democrats are pro- protesting the Democrats. Nixon gets in there, because he promised, he, he promised to the, the protesters, I'll end the war. When I get in there, I'll end the war, because he knew that's what they wanted to hear. So, hey, they, he's saying he'll end it. Well, he didn't end it. Christ, he, he, gets, he becomes president, and the war goes on for seven years. All right, so he didn't do it. Well, what's old is new again, <laughs> okay? They're trying the same tactic again. And who are they trying to seat back in the, into power but Trump? And if they think Trump is going to give a shit about what goes on over there, okay, uh, or what these protesters are talking about, <laughs> you guys are more deluded than you're acting, okay? He's not going to listen to you, and he's not going to give you what you want. Okay, you guys will still be out there protesting, all right? Because what ha- what will happen is he'll probably just uh, load up Israel with more bombs, more weapons, and tell Netanyahu go in there and enjoy yourself. And he'll just carpet bomb, got the Gaza Strip there until there's not a single blade of grass standing, if there's any grass over there, there's, until there's nothing left. Okay, then what are you people that are out there saying you're pro Hamas, you're pro terrorists? What are you people going to do then? You know, you're, right now Biden is offering an olive branch to Netanyahu and, and the Hamas leaders to say, look, we, we can bring this to a stop, okay, but you've got to have a ceasefire so we can work on this, okay? He's promised all kinds of aid to them, uh, you know, money to be sent to, to help out, you know, the wounded and stuff like that, to try to help them. And yes, they are using our weapons over there, okay? But these have been weapons that have, they've had in their hands for way before Biden was even president, okay? This is stuff that they've been, they've been sitting on. They ha- you know, this hasn't been an ongoing fight. These fights happen in spurts over there, okay? So they stockpile our weapons, and then when the time comes and they need them, they got them. But that doesn't mean that we've been sending them, you know, every year we send boatloads of fucking bullets over there and stuff. No, they, they stockpile that shit. So the weapons they're using, they probably got from the previous administration or the one before that even, okay? So to say here that this is all Biden's fault or to try to lay all the blame on him, you're being misled by the groups I just told you about that are trying to split you against your own people, okay? They're trying to pit you against each other so that way they can slip into the White House and then you guys won't even know what the hell happened. Don't make that mistake, okay? It already happened once. Learn from history, for Christ's sake. Read about that era, you know, during the presidential election year for Nixon. Read about what went on in that fucking time, and you're going to see a lot of reflections of what's happening today being played out, that have been played out in the past. You're going to see a replay of history here. This is why you're supposed to take history and learn from it, so you don't make those same mistakes, okay? So, you know, I don't know how else to say it. I, I mean, I'm not a college professor, but I'm, an, but I'm just your average idiot that's out on the street, and even I know better. Okay, and you guys, you're in college, you should know better than me. But apparently, none of you seem to take history as a real important subject. And you'd be wrong to think that, okay? Because we've made a lot of mistakes in just my lifetime that we could have avoided if we had listened to the past, you know? And, uh, you know, I just, I feel like, you know, you know, don't set yourself up to be a sucker. Because when you're at my age, you're going to say, geez, that was stupid back then to think that, you know? And th- then you're going to be trying to tell y- the younger generation what I'm trying to tell you now. Don't make that same mistake. So anyway, I mean, it's uh, like I said, if this the mayor here sees this. And uh, so I'm saying, well, he probably is more privy to information coming his way there that would back up what he just said. He wouldn't just say that, you know, and. Uh, I'm just thinking that, you know, it makes sense to me. I mean, look, there's always been people in America that have been trying to destroy the country from within in my whole fucking lifetime. That's, that's always been there. And uh, we just, uh, 
we like to think that that's not true. You know, we all like to pretend that, oh, well, that, that's, that was an isolated thing in history and, you know, these people were dealt with. No, we've only, we only rounded up a few out of the bunch, you know, to answer for things that they did, but the rest remain and they're still growing stronger and they still recruit, they still get people. And with the internet, which they didn't have back in 86, with the internet to now, it's so much easier now to reach out and touch someone, <laughs> you know, to borrow a slogan. It's so much easier now. And we can reach across the ocean for that matter. I mean, what's to, what's to say that people in other countries like China or Russia aren't reaching across the ocean and, uh, and uh, filling our kids' heads with lies to get them to do just what I've been saying, to infiltrate, uh, protest, stir the shit, pit people against each other, create a little civil war, if you will, inside our own country uh, over this issue, you know? It's possible. I mean, we're getting to the point in, in our lives where most things can be possible given time, you know, and who 40 years ago, nobody would ever imagine that we could be in this pot of water here that's boiling right now. Nobody ever imagined, oh, well, internet, what the hell is that? You know, what would that be like, you know, or, or cell phones and computers and all that other stuff. You know, we didn't have any of that stuff then. But we were content living the way we were, okay? But, you know, people were always reaching to the future to, to move us into things that I think our society wasn't always prepared for. You know, we certainly weren't prepared for the Internet and how fast it became a part of our lives, how we're connected to it in so many fucking ways. Um, uh, there's an upside and a downside to everything, I suppose, but, you know, the downside always seems to show its ugly face prominent over the good matters. And, and so when it's like that, you know, people, you know, we start to look back and say, Jesus, you know, the simpler times are easier. They may have been. They may have been. But the problems were still there, you know, that uh, we just didn't know about because we didn't have the reach into other people's lives like we do today. Um we, we, when we were reading the news, for most of us, the only national news we got was from television. The local news was basically in the newspaper. And they're only going to cover what's going on around you. But, you know, who knows what's happening in this state or that state or all this. And then when all of a sudden that happens, all those states become our local news now. <laughs> because when we see what's happening over there, somehow it bleeds into our lives and we start echoing it. So, you see, the internet, okay... But, you know, for this, these protests and how quickly they've escalated into this, this violence and, and vandalism and, uh, you know, defiance of the law, to see how quickly that blossomed uh, so quickly before the election, uh, you, you figure there's got to be outside people motivating that, adding gas on the fire, basically, wanting to see this defragment the Democrat Party so when the election comes around, people are either not going to vote or they're going to vote independent, you know, and just, you know, destroy Trump, uh, Biden's chances of getting back into, you know, the White House. I mean, that, that would be the, the worst possible outcome from all this. And my suggestion is what's happening in Israel, between, between Israel and Hamas, is not, an Ameri is not our problem. We're not at war over there, okay? That's their problem. It's just like what happened in Vietnam. You know, we knew enough back then that we needed to stay the hell out of that mess, but we went in anyway. Okay, and we've been regretting that ever since. It cost us over, what, 50,000 lives, you know, before we finally learned that, oh, we shouldn't have been there. Well, we couldn't stop communism from taking that region, and it's still communist over there today. So, this is a situation in Israel, okay, and I know we got treaties, we're supposed to help them out, but we, that doesn't mean that we are tied hand and foot to that treaty, if we don't like what they're doing, if, say, Israel, you know, gets, you know, a, a dictatorship kind of a guy in there, we don't have to stay obligated to that motherfucking treaty, okay? And neither does the UN. The UN doesn't have to hold them uh, to any standard, okay? But we, we, you know, it's convenient to be allied with them, you know, but right now it isn't because Netanyahu is just that kind of person. He's a guy like Trump. You know, he's he's trying to cover his ass from being arrested and charged, which is what the UN is looking at right now. 
charging, uh, uh, just like they, they're doing with uh, Putin. They're looking at Netanyahu as a war criminal now, and they want to charge him, and they want to have him arrested. You know, they're trying to they're curtail his movements in the world, basically, where if you, if you step foot here, we're going to arrest you. You know, it goes to show you the protesters are on the wrong side, okay? There's no good guy in this thing over there, okay? No good guy. What's what's sad is the is the good guys are the actual people caught in the crossfire, okay? That's where... Uh, that's where the the problem is, okay? The leaders are doing the wrong thing over there, and we shouldn't be over here supporting one side or the other. What we should be here talking about is forcing a ceasefire, bringing some peace to that region. Peace is what they need right now so they can catch their breath. They can, you know, calculate their losses, figure out what to do, come to agreement, you know, start, get the discussion going to maybe bring some kind of closure here to this shit because it's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse, all right? So that's what we need to be doing. That's what we need to be doing, and we've got to hold people accountable for the things that they did, but we got to stop the fighting because that otherwise all the protests in the world aren't going to do a damn thing. At the end of the day, it's always going to be up to Israel and Hamas to, to settle their differences. And, and really, Hamas is just a proxy fighter and all this shit anyway. It's really Iran that's fueling this shit with, with uh, Hamas. They're, they're fighting over there for Iran, okay? Uh, truth be known. That, that that's, these people are tied with Iran. And, of course, Iran is allied with, guess who? Russia. So, like I said, these protesters, they need to really stop with this agitation and this vandalism, Okay? Bring it home, sit down, read the news, find out what the hell's going on before you get out there and realize that there is no good guy in this situation. Israel or Hamas or Palestinian, okay, they're defending people who are trying to kill each other. They ought to be, the people in America ought to be here protesting and suing for peace. We need to have a stop to the fighting. That's what we got to push uh, Biden uh, to help him to get across uh to the UN or whoever will listen, that we need to get some ceasefire going on here. And, and that's what they're trying to do, I guess, for right now. They're trying to get that, uh, get that ceasefire in there. So maybe we can work on bringing about an end here, you know, I, I hope, anyway. All right, let's go to commercial break. This is me. This is me. This is me! This is me. I'm Alex Curtis, I'm a lobsterman in Maine, and this is me. I'm Ruth McLaughlin, and this is me. I'm Eric Hopkins, I'm an artist, and this is me. This. This. This is me. 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 This is me. This is me. This is me. At the end of the journey, the main thing is you, original.
Thank you. And and then and uh, 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 because brilliant the fake news which I would I, if uh, and it's so sad but regardless it's so sad and likewise uh, and that's the way it is so I want to just finish by saying that Iowa, we love you. You are going to... Oh. Thank you very much, everybody. Great honor. Thank you very much. Some people have a deep, abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. And some people don't. People start pollution. People can stop it. Write for Pollution Booklet, Box 1771, Radio City Station, New York. Be a part of the entertainment value of a lifetime. I loved it. It was the best performance I've seen in a lifetime. I loved the show. I liked it very much. He's a very entertaining man. It's well worth the money. Now, appearing in Charlottetown, coming to Halifax November 6th to the 18th, and St. John November 20th through the 26th. To compound on this, uh, this uh, I, I guess, you, I, I'm not going to say theory, but uh, compound on the fact that we do have agitators that go into these protests. Uh, here's an older article from 2020. Uh, it's talking about uh, George Floyd and the protests that were around that and how there were indications that white supremacists had infiltrated those protests. And this is from uh, Just Security by Mia Bloom, uh, justsecurity.org. Okay, uh, it says, when anyone studies the Middle East for as long as I have, you become practically immune to conspiracy theories. The word in Arabic, mumarat, is pervasive, and after hearing my whole adult life about the hidden forces behind various catastrophes, one automatically winces when someone tries to push the real story they heard somewhere or saw on social media. The protests that have torn through the United States following the murder of George Floyd at the hands of Minnesota police officers shift the emphasis in real-time videos broadcast nationally. The images challenge our beliefs about who was really protesting and for what reason. 
Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz echoed this sentiment in a press conference on Saturday alleging that the demonstrations that caused so much damage included provocateurs likely from outside the area. State officials said around 80% of those arrested in the Twin Cities on Friday were from outside Minnesota. Former FBI agent and CNN commentator Josh Campbell wrote that Minnesota, quote, authorities have been monitoring alleged criminals online, including postings by suspected white supremacists trying to incite violence, unquote. Before the rioting started in Washington, D.C., Brooklyn, Denver, Atlanta, and other cities, allegations emerged that undercover police officers might be to blame for some of the worst commercial destruction in Minneapolis. Experts on political violence and not just QAnon conspiracy theorists shared stories on social media that the May 27 sh looting and arson at AutoZone by an unidentified man in a gas mask carrying an open umbrella, dubbed Umbrella Man, was not necessarily a protester, but could be an agent, provocateur, or member of the police. Uh, side note, uh, that umbrella guy showed up again, in a, and I can't remember where, but he's, he's back in the news again, so he's still around. Uh, <clears throat> in a video posted to YouTube while this man smashed windows with a hammer, protesters at the scene accused him of being an outsider and began to film him. According to reporting... In the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, the, uh, quote, the man's actions were so odd that other rioters in the area paused their own protest to call him out and begin filming. Uh, quote, are you a effing cop? Unquote. Someone else can be heard yelling to the man as he disappeared from view. Unquote. People in St. Paul, including someone saying they are a former fiancé, claimed, to have identified Umbrella Man as Jacob Pedersen, a member of the St. Paul Police, whose goal would appear to be to exacerbate racial tensions and instigate more property damage in order to undermine the legitimacy of the protest against police brutality. However, the St. <coughs> Excuse me, the St. Paul Police Department issued an unequivocal statement saying the individual was not Pedersen, and told reporters that Pedersen had a complete alibi. Quote, we spoke with his supervisor who was with him. We spoke to his colleagues who were with him, unquote, said Steve Linders, public information officer for the St. Paul Police Department. Quote, we were able to verify where the officer was and who he was with. In fact, he was working as a St. Paul police officer protecting people and property, unquote. In Atlanta, the demonstrations began in the early afternoon and started out largely peaceful. Legendary civil rights leader John Lewis marched alongside a diverse group shouting slogans in the names of African Americans killed by police violence. I would have attended myself except for a global pandemic which has also impacted the African American community at a disproportionate rate. Instead, I followed along uh, the peaceful march with my friend Shannon who attended with her children. It appears that over the hours... The demographics of the demonstration changed in real time in front of the cameras. What began in Atlanta was a protest to honor the memory of George Floyd and make a powerful statement about continued police brutality across the country and more locally in Brunswick, Georgia. In February, while jogging, uh, Ahmad Arbery was murdered by a retired police officer, Gregory McMichael, and his son Travis. The case took over two months to come to light because law enforcement officers in Brunswick refused to bring charges, and once the video of the lynching was posted to social media, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation took action. By 7 p.m., the Atlanta protesters appear to have been joined by elements who had an ulterior motive, what explains the attack on the CNN building that Friday evening. <laughs> That morning, the protests were galvanized further by the arrest of Omar Jimenez, a CNN reporter live on air, while his Caucasian colleague, Josh Campbell, two blocks away, was not. White anchors said what people of color has been saying for years, that driving uh, while black, jogging while black, reporting while black, birdwatching while black, selling lemonade while black, was perceived to be a threat by racists at the hands of police with the power to arrest and kill and not arrest the lynchers. This, is, this was the weaponization of race. CNN became a target of right-wing attacks on social media, more so than usual, on Friday, while some claim 
the demonstrators uh, were attacking Cena because there was a small Atlanta Police Department station inside the building. It is at the back of the building and has a different entrance. The attacks on the iconic red letter sign and what the demonstrators were saying and not saying did not correspond with demonstrations in uh, the other cities. Unlike earlier in the day at the protests with John Lewis, these protesters were not calling out the names of victims of police brutality. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, Freddie Gray, Michael Brown, Eric Garner, Tamir Rice, uh, Philando Castile, the list goes on. Uh, the demographics of a largely white, young, and destructive group fit more with a movement known as acceleration, accelerationists than Black Lives Matter. The accelerationists, if you have never heard the term, are an extreme subset of white nationalism whose goal is to bring about chaos and destruction. Uh, the basic tenet of accelerationism argues that since Western governments are inherently corrupt, uh, the best and only thing supremacists can do is accelerate the end of society by sowing chaos and aggravating political tensions. Quote, accelerationist ideas have been cited in mass shooters' manifestos explicitly in the case of the New Zealand killer and are frequently re referenced in white supremacist web forums and chat rooms, unquote. Zach Bocamp explained. Okay, so, yeah, it's much longer. <laughs> That's only half the article. Um, so, there's a lot here about that. And it, and it just illustrates, you know, that they were doing it then. These people were doing it then. W why wouldn't they be doing the same thing now? Okay, of course they're doing it now. Whenever there's, whenever there's discord in this country... That's a, that's a sign. It's time to do something. They got to go out there and get into that group and, and so plant seeds of discord, make it worse, do whatever it takes to create a, a perfect storm, if you will. Okay. That will, especially during an election year, will create an outcome that uh, in their mind would bring about the end of the United States. Accelerationists. Okay. That's what they're after. Um, and they justify that by their opinion that the government is so corrupt that it has to come down. Yeah, it is corrupt, okay? And the way we deal with corruption is through checks and balances. The guy that's running on the Republican Party will do away with all of that. He wants to get rid of whole departments in our goddamn government, for Christ's sake. He doesn't want checks and balances, and yet, because you people are mad that the country's corrupt, only means that there's not enough checks and balances. So instead of going out there saying we need to destroy the government, why don't you go out there and say we need to tighten up our securities in our government to make sure that honesty uh, prevails the day instead of uh, corruption and whatever? Why not do that? Why not go out there and say that instead? Uh, but no, they. you see, it's because they want the country to collapse. They don't like America. You know, this, this is a, a hatred of this country that goes back even before this generation. Okay, this goes way back. And the fact is, even if this country was a, an emerald city, for Christ's sake, they'd still find something wrong with it and to say, we want to tear it down. Okay? The fact is, these people that they call themselves, uh, whatever, you know, white supremacists, they just want their own thing. And we know what they want, okay? You look up white supremacists, you know, in, uh, in an encyclopedia or something, okay? And you know what they're all about. They're racist. They're bigots. Okay. They don't want any other race in this country besides white Christians. Okay. They don't want an America that stands for all faiths, that stands for all peoples. They don't want that. They can't stand having people with darker skin than them in this country. They can't stand, you know, these people uh, believing in other things other than what they do. They, they just ain't got no tolerance, tolerance for anything. I, I don't know when I said this a long time back, but that's the big problem in this country is we got no tolerance for anything, okay? Everything that we see that rubs us the wrong way, we, we get all hysterical over it. And this, this you know, now this brings to mind that, remember there was this murder that happened, you know, in Texas. These two students in high school they were graduating they were going each were going into the military one was going into the navy the other was going into the air force they were both cadets they were going to be officers but before they had got in there while they were in high school there was this love triangle that went on okay and uh the girl who was wacky as shit 
convinced her boyfriend they needed to kill the girl he was banging, okay? <laughs> Basically. And so he says that, you know, you know, she made me do it. She, she put the gun in my hand and I pulled the trigger. Okay, whatever. That really is beside the point. The point is, is that she was so crazy that and jealous over what happened that she managed to manipulate this guy to do something, you know, that, you know, I have to wonder, you know, would any guy be talked into killing somebody, you know, after they just whatever? Could you know I couldn't be talked into that, but this guy could. She talked him into it. She put made a huge hissy fit when she found out that he was cheating on her. Okay, and she talked him into killing her, and he did it. Okay, um, I mean I I see that you know this is this is the kind of thing in, in a bigger scale. Okay, in a larger scale, well we ain't got just this one girl here with a with a mental problem. We got a whole bunch of people with mental problems all doing the same thing. They're throwing a hissy fit and they're trying to convince us to destroy our own government. The more people they can suck in to their cause, the better. You know, the better their chances. Okay? And there's a lot of people that they reach out to online to do just that. Okay? And there's a lot of suckers here these days that have been listening to the wrong people. Okay? Um, I know I'm, I'm one that doesn't like to quote polls and stuff like that, but there's been a, a talk going around about how people who get their news from social media sites are people who will support Trump. And people who get their news in the more traditional fashion with newspapers and your regular, you know, news on TV, you know, so they're support Biden. Okay. Now, I don't know how they question that out or how many people they asked. Okay. But it does kind of make a point to say that, you know, people getting their news, you know, or, or, or especially through the internet alone, they're subjecting themselves to some bad shit coming their way. Okay. Because you've got algorithms out there that keep track of what people click on. Okay. And if people are interested in bullshit news, like National Enquirer stuff, then they're going to get bullshit news coming their way. <laughs> okay, what? Well, and do they ch bother to check out where this, this news is coming from or the background of the company that they got it from? No. You know, it shows up in their email or, or you know, however people get their messages and stuff. It shows up, they read it, and they go, oh, Jesus, look at that, you know. They, they don't have the time, I guess, for some of these people to just you know, click on the website, find out what their history is, you know, and how long ago they've been around, you know, and just find out who the hell they're getting this from, you know, and, you know, the, uh, I, you know, we got, like I said, the internet, and we got other countries that can get online. I mean, they could make web pages that look American, right? Make news pages that look American, and they can print whatever the hell they want in there, and they put it out there, that's bait for, for Americans to, to read, right? You know, there's, there's, like I said, there's no limit, really, to where, uh, you know, they can take this and, to, and how to recruit people. Uh, I, I think about uh, Alex Jones, you know, that big mouth. One big mouth. And look how much havoc he wrought, you know, uh, especially with the Sandy Hook uh, people and stuff like, you know, the, what happened with them. He got a quarter of this country to believe that that whole thing was a friggin' hoax. Okay? He did that, and at the same time, he was asking you to buy stuff that, you know, he was making there or whatever. <laughs> okay? He was making all kinds of money off of suckers. All right? He, he was the biggest used car, big mouth. I mean, this guy could have made a fortune, you know, selling things. Okay? Instead, he decided to in integrate politics in with what he was selling. Okay? That's what made him controversial. He, if by injecting politics into his mouth, he made a lot of people upset and pissed off, which is how he ended up in court and ending up with all this money that made him go bankrupt. But he's still on the air. He's uh, not on the air, but he's still on the internet with his show, InfoWars. He's still doing what he's doing. So he, he hasn't learned anything. Uh, a guy like that who's been lying his whole fucking life is never going to learn. He won't change his ways, okay? So it doesn't matter how, how many rulings the court brings down on his head. He's just going to keep doing what he does. But, like I said, it, it doesn't take many people to sow discord in America. 
You don't need to have a, a giant cabal of, of, you know, of thousands of people working. No, you only need one person, you know. You only need one person. And look how many followers he created, you know. Enough followers to really raise all merry hell in situations like what's going on right now in these campuses. You know, it's certainly plausible, you know, considering, you know, what uh, kind of people were following Alex Jones. I mean, these people were also harassing the the fa the parents of those kids that were killed, you know, and the family members. I mean, they were calling them and threatening them and all kinds of shit. I mean, the... I mean, there's a, I think there's a, a, a show on HBO Max, if you watch, if you stream, that they have on Alex Jones, and uh, it's called Alex Jones and the Truth, or Versus the, it's that, just put in Alex Jones, you'll come up with it. I watched this a while back, but, uh, you know, it's, it, it really lays out the power of what a liar can do to people, and how, you know, when you get a, a bunch of followers who... Uh, or employees, I should say, not followers, employees, people who work with him, okay, how, you know, one backs up the other and everything, you know, like, well, I, I know this is true, and, you know, and if, if, you know, basically trying to make their stories sound more credible by getting people on the air or whatever to agree with them. I mean, that's, that's how a lot of these shows are, you know, especially on Fox when they have that panel of four or five people there uh, all sitting here rubbing each other's head, okay, basically... Uh, agreeing to everything that they're saying, it makes it all sound more credible. Because oh well, they believe it. That person believes it. This, you know what I'm saying? So they get the they get the ball rolling. So that way, when it gets tossed out into the public, you know, you got everybody out there also following and agreeing with it and everything. Okay, that's how you do it, and that's how he did it. So you know, he just uh, and he's and, he, and even during the, the the court trials and stuff like that. Uh, he simply wouldn't back down, and it was obvious. I mean, the guy's, you know, the more he kept up his shtick, the less credible he looked, okay? The more bizarre he became. And you almost begin to feel sorry for the guy because you know now he's got a mental problem. He's, he's got a problem with not being able to tell the truth. No matter how many Bibles he puts his hand on that he's going to do it, he ain't going to do it. He can't. He's unable to. He can't help himself. He has to lie about everything. That's because he has the sick need to have to be the central focus of everything. He's got to be a central. T In a way, he sounds a lot like Rush Limbaugh did. Rush Limbaugh was the same way. He had to be somewhere where people could hear him. You know, he couldn't just disappear. You know, he did that job till he died. You know, and when people do stuff like that, you know, and, and they really pound uh, the table for drama, you know, they dramatize it, they make it big, like, you know, like Trump does, you know, like, oh, this is the worst thing that's ever happened in human history, and never, never, you know, they, there's, that's their stick, that's their, that's what they do, that's how they get, grab you in, okay, is the drama, you know, and it keeps you from actually looking in to see where the facts are, which usually there aren't any, you know, and uh, so when these people are out there infiltrating groups like that, uh, they got to have a little bit of that magic too in order to get into those groups and start doing what they do. All right. So I think, like I said, what's going on right now, this happening in two important states in our country for an election, uh, there's obviously elements behind both that's, you know, basically trying to turn this thing in on its ear. And the, and the, kids that are protesting, I don't know if they're even aware of it, that this is happening, that, you know, maybe the person that they think is their friend really isn't their friend, or where the information they're getting from isn't really information at all, but lies, you know, uh, I think they ought to just, uh, take a breather and check their facts, check your facts, you know, I think you guys, a lot of you are probably going down the wrong road and you're not going to realize you've fucked up until it's too late. So you better stop now while you're, you know, and re-examine what the hell it is your goal is and, you know, how plausible that can be given what, you know, what really is happening over there in the Middle East right now. Okay, so that's it. And I hope everybody uh, has a great rest of the week. Subscribe, comment, and uh, uh, keep your ears open for any any. Uh, viruses or whatever the hell might be bugging around out there. And please treat each other kindly and try to respect each other's opinions, tolerance, 
Okay, even if you don't agree, don't get into people's faces if they say something you don't agree with because that only leads to fighting and then the police and then prison. You know what I'm saying? Don't do it. Okay, just, you know, smile and walk away, you know, whatever. I mean, I get, I get, because I'm a veteran, I get uh, approached all the time by people who want to sit and talk to me about their history in the military, and I really don't want to hear it, but they want to talk anyway, but <laughs> I just grin and bear it, okay? It's better than to say, look, will you get out of my face? And, so, you know, I'm not going to start a fight. You shouldn't want to do that either, okay? There's, there's diplomatic ways in any situation to just, you know, get out of the situation. So take care, everybody. Bye-bye.